so UCLA is located on land that was historically um, for millennia, the land of what are now called the Gabrielino Tongva people. The California native populations were colonized twice. So the first time it was by the mission missionaries and the mission systems. And that's why um, the land-based tribes here have names like Gabrielino because they were concentrated from different villages in the San Gabriel mission, right? It, the the land-based tribe in the San Fernando Valley is the Fernandeño Tataviam because they were concentrated in the um, San Fernando mission. It's important to map those lands out because um, like us, <laughs> many people don't know the history of this area. Um, they don't realize that this land was inhabited by indigenous people before varying waves of settler populations came to the area and occupied it and dispossessed those indigenous peoples of their land. Um, and so marking those spaces, what the village names were, who, you know, marking that history, it feels really important to indigenous people today. And I think um, it also is an opportunity to kind of visibilize a different landscape of Los Angeles than the one that we see today. I think the importance of land acknowledgement is to really give recognition to the tribes and the original people that this land base is based on. However, I feel like we should move beyond um, land acknowledgement. Land acknowledgements are controversial, but I think that um, at UCLA we created one in dialogue with um, the Tongva and it is really represents an effort to acknowledge as a land grant institution that we are on the traditional lands of the Tongva people, right? And that these lands were um, not ceded by them, they were taken from them and that we, each and every one of us today benefit um, from that having happened as we um, pursue our educations and our careers at UCLA. I think that with the university, I mean, we, it's great that we do land acknowledgement, but I think it needs to go beyond work directly with the tribes. I mean, we have the Tongva people, we have the Tatavian people, we have the Chumash people that are all around Los Angeles um, County. And UCLA should definitely really work with those tribes um, because this is really their home, their land base. We can say a land acknowledgement at the start of our events and put one on our email signature, but that's not doing very much if we aren't working beyond that to deepen our relations with the native peoples on whose land you know we reside. Um, I think UCLA is making some efforts to do that um, beyond the land acknowledgement and I think um, in particular, the efforts underway to open um, public um, outdoor spaces on campus to Native community to come into, to um, celebrate ceremony, to um, you know have gatherings, even to harvest um, Native plants, um, and and also the efforts by UCLA to incorporate Indigenous knowledges, particularly Tongva knowledge. Um, of native plants in their um, efforts at greater sustainability of our outdoor spaces on the UCLA campus are ways to deepen those relations. And so, you know, there are a number of different ways that we can try to deepen those. Um, for students, I would recommend, um, you know, reaching out, getting to know the first peoples of the land um, that you're on and, um, you know, exploring other avenues for pursuing deepening those relations. I think what students at UCLA can do is really, you know, use their voice, use their voice, um, you know, write letters to local officials and saying, you know, we really need to recognize the, the local tribes here in Southern California. How can we do that? We can do that by saying, why don't we consider changing some of the names of some of these buildings on campus or, you know, write to some of the senators and, and the governor in the state of California and saying, you know, you have the effort of giving some of the land base back to them. You know, why don't we change some of these parks and name them after some of the local tribes and have the tribes work directly with them, have them manage these um, local parks. Native Heritage Month, like Indigenous Peoples Day, like land acknowledgements can become just a, you know, check the box. Oh, it's Native Month, we'll have a Native event. Um, I would encourage around Native Heritage Month, uh, again, to really pursue kind of deeper engagements around uh, with the Native peoples on whose land we, we live and work. Mm -hmm.